Standing between God and the millions of Jehovah's Witnesses is an autocratic ruling council called the Governing Body. Because Jehovah's Witnesses believe the Word of God is channeled to humanity through this elite committee alone, these men rule with unchallenged authority. Every witness is subject to their dictatorship, from the cradle to the grave. Raymond Franz, author of the book Crisis of Conscience, was a member of the Watchtower Society's governing body for nine of his 60 years as a Jehovah's Witness. His account of their secret sessions is revealing. I must say that it was one of the most disillusioning experiences of my life. Uh, it came as a, a rude awakening to me to see what actually went on. I envisioned the governing body as a body of men to whom the, the Bible, God's Word, was the controlling force in every one of their decisions who really dug into the scriptures to make sure that everything that they did was soundly based upon the Bible. And when I got into the governing body, I found that the Bible was rarely appealed to, was rarely used, that mainly was a matter of discussing organizational policy and how to apply this organizational policy. And I found that again and again, when issues came up, even though scriptures might pre be presented, if there was an organizational policy, that policy would take precedence over scripture. And I couldn't help but think of Jesus' words in Matthew 23, that they have made the word of God null and void because of their tradition. Peter Gregerson was a member of the Watchtower Society for nearly 50 years. He was a highly respected elder and served in a number of responsible positions. And as a result, I started to do some very serious thinking about things that were going on inside the organization. It seemed to me, though, that everything always came back to the question, is the Watchtower Society and its leadership, are they the faithful slave? I really wanted to prove to myself that the Watchtower Society was right. Gregerson decided to examine the same teachings that Christ would have examined in 1919 when he was supposedly evaluating the world's religious organizations. The Watchtower's latest teachings at that time were published in a book called The Finished Mystery. What I found absolutely destroyed my confidence in the Watchtower. They had said that the end of the world would come in 1914. And in this book that was just hot off the presses for Christ to investigate, we're saying that by the spring of 1918, millions of people would be dying in the streets throughout the world. It, it wasn't happening in 1918. Christ was supposedly examining this written material to see whether the Watchtower Society should be put in charge of all of God's interests on the earth, and they were guilty of the worst kind of false prophecy. In addition to false prophecy, the finished mystery contained a number of other pretty ludicrous interpretations of Scripture. According to them, Revelation 12 clearly shows that Michael and his angels are the Pope of Rome and his bishops. Revelation 14 mentions a distance of 1,600 furlongs, which this fascinating book explains is the distance from Scranton, Pennsylvania, to Watchtower headquarters in Brooklyn, provided you go by way of the Hoboken Ferry and the Lackawanna Railroad. The Bible speaks of the great sea monster, Leviathan. You may want to know what the Leviathan really looked like. The finished mystery told Jehovah's Witnesses that the Leviathan was a steam locomotive, and this little coupling link was its tongue. This book, the Watchtower's main teaching book of the time, included a prediction that in 1918, demons would invade the minds of the Christian church, which they refer to as the swine class. We wish every Jehovah's Witness today could read the finished mystery for themselves. They would probably reach the same conclusion Peter Gregerson did. I spent a lot of time praying, a lot of time thinking, came to the conclusion there was no possible way that Christ Jesus as a judge could have looked at this information and have given the authority that was claimed by the Watchtower Society. To support its beliefs, the Watchtower organization has published its own version of the Bible called the New World Translation. To lend credence to this translation, the Watchtower Society has deliberately misquoted a number of well-known Greek scholars. Dr. J.R. Manti, an eminent Greek scholar, was one of the authorities quoted out of context. 
The Watchtower Society has implied that he supports their New World translation. Dr. Manti disagrees. I have never found any so-called translation that goes so far away from what the scripture actually teaches as these books published by Jehovah's Witnesses. They are so far away from what there is in the original Hebrew and the original Greek. Dr. Manti called the Jehovah's Witness Bible a shocking mistranslation, obsolete and incorrect. You can't follow. There's because it's biased and uh, it's deceptive because they deliberately changed words in a passage of scripture to make it fit into their doctrine. They distorted the scripture in many passages, scores and scores of passages in the New Testament, dealing with the deity of Christ especially. When early Watchtower teachings that the world entered the so-called time of the end in 1799, that Jesus returned invisibly in 1874, and that the world would end in 1914 were proven false. Doctrine was conveniently readjusted. In the new version, 1914 became the date of both Christ's invisible return and the beginning of the time of the end. This date was put forth not as theory or interpretation, but as hard, indisputable fact. Watchtower Society official Eugene Mortensen. The Jehovah's Witnesses from the study of the Bible have firm belief in the fact that since the fall of 1914, Jesus has come into kingdom power. And as he prophesied in the 24th chapter of Matthew, the generation who saw the beginning of this time would not pass away until all things would be accomplished. That means also the end of this wicked system of things. The Watchtower Society is very concerned that time is running out for the so-called generation of 1914. The few who are still living are quite elderly, and should they all pass away before Armageddon, Jehovah's Witnesses will be faced with another false prophecy to explain. Anticipating this future embarrassment, the Chairman's Committee of the Governing Body actually prepared a document suggesting the date be changed from 1914 to 1957. Raymond Franz was a member of the Governing Body when this recommendation was considered. Now, in this document, they suggest and advance as a, an idea that uh, the generation that would see the time of the, the uh, end of all things should not be counted from 1914. They fix on Jesus' statement that there would be signs in the heavens. And so they suggest here that the date should be moved up to 1957 when the Sputnik was sent into space by the Russians and they say now this is the celestial phenomena that would indicate the generation that would see the final wind-up. The Sputnik idea was ultimately rejected by the governing body but for the generation of 1914 time is running out. How did the watchtower arrive at 1914 as an all-important date? Their chronology is based on the year 607 B.C., which they claim is the year Jerusalem fell to the Babylonians. Carl Olaf Johnson, Swedish author of the book The Gentile Times Reconsidered, is a former Jehovah's Witness elder and pioneer minister. I didn't question this chronology in the beginning because I thought the Bible supported it. I knew, of course, that... Uh, Historians uh, dated the, the desolation of Jerusalem not in 607, but in 587 uh, or 586. But uh, in 1968, I conducted a Bible study with a man who wanted to know why historians, they uh, preferred the date 20 years later. Uh, so I started to investigate the matter. And I soon discovered that um, historians had very strong evidence in their support. Johnson Paul. compiled his research and sent it to Watchtower headquarters. But, but the society's leaders were determined to keep their doctrinal system intact. I got the letter with a warning. I was warned that uh, I should not share my findings with uh, other witnesses. To conceal the facts, 
and suppress his seven years of research, the Watchtower Society excommunicated Carl Olaf Johnson. It's strange, but they, they seem able to <clears throat> teach two different things, opposite things, simultaneously. They agree that the Bible teaches that we are saved by grace, or as they put it, God's undeserved kindness, and not by works. And yet the average witness believes, he hasn't the slightest doubt, that unless he performs the works that are laid out for him by the Watchtower Society, the witnessing activity, going door to door, uh, regular meeting attendance, and other things that are brought out, that he will never gain everlasting life. Desperate boy. They can hardly escape responsibility for their policies in the African country of Malawi. Policies that left thousands of witnesses raped, homeless, or dead. In the mid-1960s, in the African country of Malawi, all citizens were ordered by the government to purchase a 25-cent party identification card. Jehovah's Witnesses were forbidden by the Watchtower Society's branch office from complying with that law. As a result, Jehovah's Witnesses suffered a terrible persecution. Homes and crops were burned. Thousands of women were raped, and some 20,000 witnesses were forced to flee Malawi into neighboring countries to live in refugee camps their lives scarred forever. Now Jehovah's Witnesses uh, are taught that it's a sin to be involved in any way with politics. They're also taught that it's just as great a sin to have anything to do with the military. But we have two situations, one in a country in Africa, Malawi, and another in Mexico, where Two opposite rulings were allowed to stay in effect at the same time, and it's almost unbelievable, the, the results of this. When Jehovah's Witnesses living in Mexico heard that their brothers had suffered this terrible persecution over a 25-cent party card, they were conscience-stricken. Because in Mexico, every young man is expected to fulfill one year of military service. He receives what's called a cartilla, a certificate. The witnesses customarily and regularly would bribe a military official to fill out this card stating that they had completed their military instruction and that they were now in the first reserves of the army. Why were they doing this? They gave me copies of letters from the Watchtower Society's headquarters in New York stating that this was purely a matter for individual conscience and that if the person felt he could do this, pay a bribe to a military official, get this card saying he had completed his military training and was now a member of the First Reserves, this was up to him. I think many times Jehovah's Witnesses have really never thought the blood thing through. It's either right or it's wrong. If it's wrong, the Watchtower Society is guilty of causing the deaths of thousands of people. That's wrong. It's evil. I think the evil needs to be seen for what it is. It's this concept, this organizational concept, that the organization is everything. You see, <clears throat> Jehovah's Witnesses believe that this organization is God's one channel, that all of God's direction for people on the earth comes through this channel. And the men on the governing body believe it. I believed it. And that's the reason I was party to some things in the past that today I, I feel shame to think that I even had part in them. If the governing body of the Watchtower Society holds and enjoys the power, then they must also bear the responsibility. The truth is, they don't. Nothing better illustrates this than their false prophecy concerning 1975. Well, when the society brought out the date 1975, I felt right away that th this is going to be the date when the thing has to happen because there was no other date beyond 1975 that anybody could point to. So uh, I grabbed right a hold of it. It was, just, it was a thing to do, and uh, I put all my hopes in it. When I was young, late 60s, early 70s, I remember talking to my grandfather about the generation. I remember the excitement in his eyes as he told me he was part of that generation. See, the understanding at that time was, the generation were those who were old enough to understand current events happening during 1914. And that was my grandfather's generation. 
He was born in the early 1900s and could see and understand what was happening in 1914. In 1984, we got new understanding. The generation was not those that had an understanding of current events. Now this generation would be contemporary, those that overlapped, sound familiar, to those who were born by 1914, thus extending the generation out. In November 1995, once again, new understanding. Now the society moved completely away from the generation being anybody born in 1914. This new generation was a wicked generation. In 2008, it was changed to no longer be the wicked generation. Now our understanding shows it to be the anointed generation. Then in 2010, we went back to the overlapping generation, but now it's the anointed overlapping. I'm still trying to wrap my head around that one. When I was younger, real emphasis was put on the generation and who they were, because who they were shows us exactly where we are in the time of things. They were older ones who didn't have long to wait. Who are they now? Please see my post on cognitive dissonance.